543 in your hymnals. 543, I gave my life for thee. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 543, I gave my life for thee. this morning when I got up before the sun. <laughs> it was How about nine, that? Nine that where? Was. Where you're at? Not where I was. It's bad. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm closer to hell. Hell, thank you. <laughs> By the way, we sing about hell today. We don't believe in that anymore. <laughs> we don't think, we think God made a mistake. All those references in the Bible to hell. Yeah, I was reading Mark 9 this week. I'm going to the Gospel of Mark. I, I'm telling myself, that isn't real. I mean, they don't believe anything we say, but we're supposed to believe everything they say. This, this is not.
not true. If thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. It's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. That's not true. I mean, it's there, but see, once you start doing that, then you can just pick and choose whatever you want. So you either believe it all or you believe none of it. You can't say, well, we're concerned about this or that. No, either you believe all of it or you believe none of it. And here we try to believe all of it. Amen. Every word of it. And we try to live according to every word of it. There is a hell. I don't like it. I wish there wasn't. But there is. There's a place where people go who reject Christ. And the devil started it. The devil was the one that said, we uh, are better than God. We want to replace God. And God said, well, then I'll just give you the worst punishment. He made hell. So anybody that wants to replace God and won't bow to Jesus as Savior, they go to hell. So I don't, I don't agree with that. Then you better switch Bibles because it, it's there. It's in there. Ready to pray? You have something on your heart? Someone? Something? Now, Lord, please, as we gather, this is not for us, it's for you. Help us to be humble. Help us to exalt you with our lips, with our soul, our spirit, our mind, our heart. May all of this be to you. And we have much to be thankful for. Thank you that we, because of what Jesus did, Thank you that we can go to heaven. Thank you that because of Jesus, heaven is our home. You said, don't be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. <coughs> and God, if there's any trouble in any heart today, replace that trouble with peace. <coughs> Father, there are those that are sick today. I think of Bernadette calling, struggling for weeks already. Just help her, give her relief and healing over that. <coughs> Others are recovering from surgeries and just stuff that wears them out, knocks them down. <coughs> God, some are struggling with mental, that heart stress. God, give them your peace. Thank you, God. You said in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. May we live that promise. Believe it, yes, but may we live like what you say is true. So may we today, all of us, as we open your word, may it change our lives. May it change the way we talk, the way we think, may it change the way we walk, may it change everything about us because your word is that powerful and we will believe you for that. We thank you for this time. Work in us, speak to us, God. Challenge us, change us. Thank you that we can sing songs that are convicting. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Time to recognize the song, uh, birthdays and anniversaries for this week. Birthdays, Donna Michelin and Angie Culp have birthdays. Is Donna here this morning? No, okay. Sorry, I don't know who you are. But Donna, <laughs> we wish you a happy birthday. Uh, but they're not here yet, so I wish them a happy birthday. Anyone else have a birthday this week? We want to recognize you. No one's going to dare raise their hand. All right, anniversaries. I don't see any listed. Any anniversaries this week? All right, the next song, 549, whosoever will, 549.
in your hymnals, our chorus of the month, 149, Because He Lives. Because He If you don't have a blue <laughs> handout, how's it feel to want? I don't, I, we, I don't have any unless there's extras. Is there extras? Johnny's got extras if you need one. There's a blue hand. We're trying to, I don't rush this. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to just say we had our lesson. And you say, well, I'm not getting anything out of it. Well, that's funny because it's God's word. Every time I read it, I get something out of it. So make sure that your heart is open. I prayed uh, all week and hard this morning that your heart would be open, that my heart would be open, and that it would be easy for us to respond to God. Because it, there comes a point when you think you know everything and you don't. I'm, I'm good. You think you're good enough. We're never good enough. We should always be trying to do better. And I don't know about you, but I have to pray more than once in the day, Lord, help me to walk in the Spirit. I don't know if you do, but I, if you don't drive, it's easier to be a Christian. But if you drive, it's all them people that don't walk in the Spirit driving that makes it hard for us who are trying to walk in the Spirit. It isn't that bad. It's been pretty good. Genesis chapter 30. May I, if you let me, I want to, Read through it because it won't hurt. I'd like to zoom through the first 24 verses. You say, you, you're not going to zoom. I'm going to try. Verse 1. When Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. i I got to stop a minute. See? It's your fault. Yeah, stop it, John. Envy is a terrible disease. A lot of people have it, don't know it. People that are sick envy people that have. I had one guy tell me, I felt so terrible, he said I was mad at everybody who was well. I said, do you know why? Yeah, because I wanted to be well. I said, no, because you were jealous. And the Bible speaks of envy. It rots your bones. So we have to be careful. When we're kids, we're mad if we have an older sibling. We're mad, but it's not anger, it's jealousy. We're jealous that they get to stay out later, that they get to drive first. Watch it. Watch it. It's there for a reason. When Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. That's competition. That's competitive. We can't compete with each other. We shouldn't compete with each other. You know, my grandkids, most of them are taller than I am. But when you're a grandkid, that's a great feat. And so I see them when they stand around me, especially when they were catching me, they stand like this. 
I think it's great. I mean, I, you know, I said, you may be taller, but you'll never be smarter. They don't know what to say. What are they supposed to say? We want to be taller. We want to be thinner. We want a magic pill, right? I want to take a pill and eat whatever I want. Rachel, verse 1. Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children. She envied her sister. She goes to Jacob, verse 1. She said, give me children or else I die. She's pretty serious, isn't she? This thing has really got a hold of her. Verse 2, Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel. Should Jacob have gotten angry? No, he didn't have any right to do that. And sometimes we're provoked by somebody else's sin. He should have said to her, Man, quit competing with your sister. I, I married you. Don't worry about it. But I'm telling you, when you rely on stuff that isn't from God, it will never be enough. When you rely on something, Amy said to me today, don't tell her. I know you will. I don't want to turn 60. I said, you should have thought about that a long time ago. Uh, very compassionate, isn't it? I said, it's too late now. It's awful. You should have thought about that 30 years ago. I said, it's just, hey, it's just a number. Just thank God, look, we're up, we're going, we're slower, but we're up, we're going. going to, there are people today can't move, terrible diseases, half our age. Jacob's anger, verse 2, was kindled against Rachel. He said, Am I in God's stead who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? He shouldn't have gotten frustrated with her. We know we're not God. Verse 3, she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her. She shall bear upon my knees that... I, I was reading through this again, trying to figure this all out, and I still can't. But that upon my knees is talking about I'll hold it, I'll cradle it like it's mine. It'll lay at my knees, it'll be mine. She'll have it, but I'll take it. And she would treat it like her own, and that's fine. She said, that my, I, verse 3, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife. Jacob went in under her, and Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son, Rachel Excuse me, Rachel said, God has judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son. Therefore, she called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, you know what? You know what that's called? Peer pressure. Well, she did it. Did you ever do that? Well, they're cutting in line. They went through the light. They didn't stop. Peer pressure. Well, I'm doing it because they did it. That doesn't make it right. So it says there, she said, when she saw, verse 9, when Leah saw that she had left, Boy, be careful what you look at. That's what got Adam and Eve in trouble. When they saw the tree, if they weren't looking at the tree, they wouldn't have been as tempted. Watch what you look at. And it gets harder all the time, doesn't it? There are things, I, I, I saw, uh, you don't care about this, but I saw today was Chris Kyle's birthday. Anybody know the name Chris Kyle? American Sniper. Today is his birthday. I mean, he's gone, but... I thought, you know, thank God for heroes. But the news has taught me things I don't want to know. And the news is so, they, they want to push in your mind. You got to be careful. Even when you think it's okay, it isn't. Leah saw, verse 9, when Leah saw 
That means she was comparing. Huh? Ladies, Amy, Amy, here, when Amy shops, doesn't mean she always buys. But the danger of that is this. She sees a lot. I want that. I saw this. Magazines. Huh? Man, hey, I want that. And guys do that too. We see something and the appeal is, hey, I, well, I should get that. So they make it easy for us to get, of course. Look at it, verse 9. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, be- I wish, I, I want to hear the discussion. Does Jacob go, oh, okay. Or does Jacob go, this is not a good idea. You don't mean this. I mean, was there any discussion? Just give me a yes or no. Was there any discussion about Leah's decision when it says, verse 9, she said, I'm going to give Jacob Zilpah for a wife. What was there, what Jacob say? Shouldn't he have said, whoa. Did they discuss it, yes or no? Kenny. If she said, listen, us guys know something about our wives. If we've been around them, we know when they're serious. We know when they mean something. The emotions, when they say, I don't care, flag. (laughs) We know, no, you tell me you don't care. I know you care. But they say that. So that we'll care. Got it? This is deep stuff now. I'm teaching you something. And they say, oh, I don't care. Now watch me. Did you ever make a decision you regret it? All the time. You you make a decision, you go, man, that was, I shouldn't have done that. And Zilpah, verse 10, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a son. I guess, here's where I want to go. I guess if God thought it would be beneficial for us to know what Jacob and Leah talked about, he would have put it in there. But I still read it and think, what in the world? Verse 11, and Leah said, a troop cometh. She called his name Gad, and Zilpah, Leah's maid, bear Jacob a second son. And Leah said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed and she called his name Asher and Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah then Rachel said to Leah give me I pray thee of thy son's mandrake first it's babies now it's mandrakes flowers aren't these beautiful by the way they look fake they look artificial but they are I'm sorry I love flowers they're, they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. They're, they're absolutely, and, and if we just had, you know, a book up here, some old dictionary, you wouldn't go, man, I like to have an old torn up dictionary like that on mine. But these flowers, and so, you know, be careful what you see, be careful what you want. She said, give me, I pray thee, verse 14, of thy son, man, and She said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. Or that she's saying, That's my reward I don't have anything, but that's mine. He lay with her that night. God hearkened, verse 17. God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived, and bare a Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire. That's my, because I have given my maiden to my husband. Anybody here believe that? Be careful what you believe. There are people that believe 
something that is so contrary to the scriptures. And they believe it so hard, so long, so sincerely that you can't tell that's not right. That, that is not, that's not true. Now she's bringing God in on it. How do you argue with that? God had given me my hire, verse 18, because I have given my maiden to my husband. She called his name Issachar. So she is saying, when I did something, I don't know how your wife would react. Now Leah said, verse 19, Leah conceived again, bare Jacob the sixth son, and Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, still trying to win out over each other. He wants me more than he wants you. Could you imagine? Think for a minute. I'm sorry. Ready? Tell me when you're ready. Tell me when your brain's ready for this, because this is going to be very, very uh, taxing on your brain. Imagine if you had two wives. You think they'd be supportive of each other? I don't know how the Mormons do it. Hey, honey, I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to sleep with, you know, Rachel tonight, rather than you, Leah, let's call him Rachel. I'm going to sleep with Rachel. Oh, really? What's wrong with me? I'm fat, aren't I? Getting wrinkly, aren't I? Now listen. You can't make bad decisions and try to soothe your conscience by thinking God was in on it. God can use our bad decisions but he is not responsible for our bad decisions. We have to be very, very careful. We have to be very, listen to me, we have to be extremely careful when it comes to why we're doing something. I have to pray every day. I have to plead with God to strip me of my pride because I don't want to do anything that I do because of me. I don't want to do anything that I do so that you will think good or say good or feel good. I have to do what I have to do because it honors and exalts and glorifies and magnifies my God. It has to be. It has to be Him. And so now you have these women, and she said, uh, now, verse 20, now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons, and she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Verse 22, and God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. I, I, look, I know, I was going to read this. I know, I know, I know. I didn't mean to lie. I lied, didn't mean to lie. just happened. Remember Numbers chapter 20 when God told Moses, I know the children of Israel are, are thirsty, and if you talk to the rock, I'll bring water. Remember lately we talked about that, that, that Moses was so upset that he hit the rock, he didn't talk to the rock. God said, speak to the rock, and it will bring forth water, uh, his water, he said, it will bring forth his water. So God said, you talk to the rock, water will come. Moses said, you're rebels, you do nothing but complain. I can't take, look, I, I can't stop you from complaining, but I have to be careful how I treat you. And so Moses said, you know, y'all are making me so mad, and he probably wanted to hit them. And then he said, no, I'll hit the rock. Right? That's better. And I, I replay that in my mind and think that through and meditate on it think, did he know that? I mean, already his mouth got him in trouble. Ye rebels, he said, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Hey, Moses, you didn't have, and that was going to show him, but when you talked to that rock, all you did was talk. You didn't bring any water. 
All of a sudden, he's yelling at them, mad at them. Bang, bang, hits the rock. Water to hit them, hits the rock. What happened after he hit the rock? Water came. It was that God's deal? No, the deal was speak to the rock and I'll bring water. But that's the kind of God we have. He takes care of us. He knows what we need. Even when we make horrible decisions, God remembered, see it? Verse 22, it's called, your lesson called, God remembered Rachel. God will never forget you. He'll always take care of you. Even when you make horrible decisions. One of the gals last night, if you were here, one of the gals said she did something that she shouldn't have done. And she was shocked at how many people it turned away from her. Isn't it funny how we can be so judgmental? Like, I would never do that. You know, I went up to her, I said, hey, I want to tell you something. I said, I know men, I have good friends, I've talked to men who are so far superior to me. And I said, they're out of the ministry because they made a horrible decision. I said, God, God will never let you down. People will. But God will never let you down. God will always remember you. And he takes care of us. And she, verse 23, says she conceived and bare a son. Said, God has taken away my reproach. She called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. Let me skip through a few of the points we made last week. We said, first blank, God's plan is so big that only he can see the whole picture. God's plan is so big that only he sees, he sees the out. We worry and fret, but God sees how it'll end up when we trust him. She was shamed. Rachel was shamed because she couldn't have kids. That was a shame in that culture. If you didn't have children, that was a shame to you. No reason to be, but that's how they felt. So God in compassion for Leah, because of the lack of love, maybe, maybe, the resentment of Jacob gave her children. They saw each other, Leah and Rachel, having kids. Rachel wasn't happy about it. Then Leah got unhappy. Be careful what makes you happy. Hey? Be careful of what makes you happy. Make sure you get your happiness from the right place. Make sure that, boy, if I just had, if I made uh, uh, $400,000 a year, I would be happy. Yes, you would for a while. Yes, you would. You would. And then you would come to a point where you'd go, if I just made a million dollars a year, I'd be happy. You see, when you're pursuing outside of God's realm, it's, that's never going to be enough. If I just had a bigger, you ever said that, a bigger house? With me, it's a garage. I just had a bigger garage for more junk. I just had a bigger garage. Then I'd get a big garage and stuff that one and go, if I just had a big barn. If I just, then you need more land. If I just had more, maybe I buy some of the bypass. They got to go around my barn, build a barn out. Into, maybe they sell me a little piece of that. It doesn't work. Leah sees Rachel and her kids and wants more. And Leah gives Jacob her maid and Rachel had given Jacob her maid and, and each maid is given sons and and now Reuben goes to work in the field and he brings home uh, mandrakes, whatever it is, doesn't really matter because the point is not what it was, whether it was kids or mandrakes. Now it says there, look at verse 14, uh, uh, Rachel said to Leah, give me, I pray thee, of thy sons 
mandrakes. Rachel is jealous. She's, she's craving, she's envy, uh, envious of the flowers. People shoot each other all the time over goofy stuff. The, the commander, if you were here last night, the commander of the Metro Homicide was here, Tim Corbett. I wanted to say, man, I don't know how you do it. Going to every shooting and every murder. And, and I talked to him a little bit when he left, and I don't think he's a Christian. And uh, I, I don't know how you deal with that all the time. You know, it's not the old west where you walk in the dust and look at each other and wait for one to draw. I mean, these are people shooting each other over shoes. Shoes. Drugs. Shoes will make me happy if they fit right. You ever have shoes that don't fit right? I don't know how women do those those pointy ones, like, Amy will go, did you see her shoes? What, who, what guy looks at shoes? You know, and then she'll show me a picture of them, and I'm thinking, how do you get, I don't know about your toes. My, anyways, you get me off track. <laughs> jealousy, blank. Jealousy affects, jealousy affects, I got to write this down, this is important. Jealousy affects, be careful of jealousy. You know what? When we're young, we want to be old. I saw my cousin this week. We had a funeral. We buried the ashes of my aunt and uncle, Felix and Catherine, who passed away October and January. And they wanted to wait for weather, and they were being cremated, and they changed from being buried in a vault, a mausoleum, to being cremated. So there was a delay. So Monday they had the the burial, the service. So I saw one of my cousins, and the cousin I played in the band with, and uh, he was talking about his wife was driving, and I said, man, remember how we, it just came to my mind, because I remember he used to let me drive when I was like 13, 14. He'd go, just drive, nobody else, don't worry about it, just drive the speed limit. And so I would drive his car. He's the other day, his wife's driving. I said, man, remember how we used to just, I, remember I beg you to drive. Oh, yeah. He said, now I don't want to drive. I said, are we getting old? I said, remember how we used to sneak your dad's car? And I'd got in trouble. We, we had sneaked my buddy's cars, and I looked the oldest, and so they'd always say to me, you drive. So I'd sit up, you know, I'm. 13, 14 years old, we're out skipping school, out in this big old, remember the big old Delta 88? Man, I'm sitting on telephone books and we're trying to, this, I can't believe I'm still alive. And, and when we're young, we want to be old. And when we're old, we want to be young. And we better be careful because jealousy, je listen, jealousy, envy affects Every desire. I was listening last night as several young people got up and talked about addiction. How they told God, I'll never do this again, and you deliver me. And they said, God showed me that I was delivered. They said, I'd get out of jail, boom, right back into it. We have to guard, guard. Colossians says, if ye then be risen with Christ, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. And again, that's hard. To seek those things which are above. Jealousy affects every desire, every desire that you have will be tainted, will be, will be affected by jealousy. 
Because I want that. I deserve that. That's what the devil told Adam and Eve. God don't want you to have that tree, but you deserve it. He knows. God knows. You'll be, you'll, you'll be God. You'll know good. You deserve that. You know what they said? You're right, devil. What'd God say? <sighs> you'll die. You don't deserve it. It's my tree. Leave it alone. Eat of that tree, you die. What'd the devil say? You deserve that. You'll be happy. He didn't use the word happy, but he said, that, come on, now, don't worry about it. Look at it. And she did. And it says there, when she saw it was good for food in a tree that will make you wise, pleasant to the eyes, she took. There's a reason. There is a reason you and I shouldn't have everything we want. May I make an old person comment? That's wrong with the, with the youth of this day. They think they deserve everything that we have. So you know what we do? I don't. You know what we do? We give it to them. You know what it does to them? Destroys them. Affects every one of their desires. Leah is upset, I'm sure. Verse 15 says, and she said unto her, is it a small matter? that thou hast taken my husband? And wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, therefore he shall lie with thee tonight. But that, you're just doing that so you can just make me mad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I'm doing that. I had a guy tell me one time, he said, you Christians just live right to make us sinners feel worse. So I respond the only way I knew I could. I said, that's right. I said, how's that going for you? Well, we wish you sinners were gone. I said, I understand. I used to be one. And that's what they forget. Leah's upset that Jacob loves Rachel. Do your kids ever say this? You love them more than you love me, don't you? I always say yes. Sorry you found out. Hope God will help you get over that. They'll go, Dad, I'll go, what, what do you want me to say? I'm sorry you perceive it that way. But they always do that. My sister always said that. You love me no more than me. My mom would go, no, here, eat something. She'd give her food or buy her. And then my sister knew. She would tell my grandparents. She would say to the Rulies, or, or Grandma Conry, my mom's mom and dad were split up, so it was Grandma Conry was my mom's mom, and Busha and Jaja, Jaja was my, dad, my mom's dad, Elmer Hazinski, she would go to Busha, Betty, our step-grandmother, I called her Busha, and she would go to both and go, my dad loves Vito better than me, and they would go, we're going to buy you something. They would, they'd take her out, buy her new clothes, buy her a bike, well, when you learn that that system works, and you don't have to be very, a baby knows that. A baby comes out of the womb, starts crying, crying, crying. You pick him up. The baby goes, hey, that works. <laughs> they know that every time they cry, somebody will be, how do you do it? We let our kids cry. We, we let them cry, close the door. We talk, so how are you? And Amy would go, I just need to go make sure they're all right. I said, if they stop crying, run in there. If they're crying, they're fine. I mean, even if they're wet, they're not going to die. No baby ever died from having a soiled diaper. Well, that I know of. Yeah, but, hey, let them cry. Leah meets Jacob as he comes in from work, from the field, she tells him that she paid for a night with him. The, the higher, verse 16. Jacob came out of the fields and Leah went out to meet him. And she, there, Thou must come unto me and unto me, for surely I have hired thee. Here, a gift. You see, you and I go, well, they're just flowers. That's a big deal. You had to hunt them. I don't know if you've been to that area, but it's not like 
greenhouses all over. It's a bunch of sand. I mean, flowers were rare, so to find those flowers it was a big deal. Like watermelon. I could eat watermelon all year. But sometimes they ship in those ones from wherever, Canada or wherever they get them in the winter. I, I don't know, but... Man, I tell you, there's just something about when you can get something that you can't get, like vanilla from Mexico, every time the homes come, you know, they just know. They go, hey, your wife wants vanilla. He'll call me. Hey, we're coming up. Your Amy wants vanilla. I said, I guess. She says the vanilla from Mexico is, is best. She says, listen to me. She tells him she pays for a night. She gives him two more sons. She thought God blessed her through her maid. And then she gives birth to a daughter. Verse 22 says that God did remember Rachel and God did hearken unto her and God did open her womb. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. You and I have, a trouble, have trouble being what we should be. God doesn't have any trouble being God. He's just God. And Romans chapter 2 says that the goodness of God leads people to repentance. He's so good. When people see that, man, if God wanted to, he could just squish you like a cockroach. But he's so good to us. Rachel, last blank. Rachel had to learn. Rachel had to learn. I put it the way you want. She had to learn that she had unrealistic expectations. Un realistic expectations of Jacob. Rachel had Joseph. In fact, she calls him Joseph and says, verse 24, the Lord shall add to me another son. One more. One more. Brad, he's not here now, but Brad handed me. You know, Brad got baptized. Brad came into the dinner last night, and he hands me a pack of mega stuff Oreos. Can't find it. I've looked, and I go, where'd you find it? Before I said, thank you. I said, where'd you find it? He said, Kroger's. I said, no, uh I was there. He said, that's where I go. I said, no, I went there. I was there last Saturday, and they had all their Oreos were on sale, $1.49. So but I, but they didn't have mega stuff. That's what I got. And I said, oh, thank you. And I opened one up, but I got home late last night, and I opened them up and had one. Look, this takes a lot of work. Listen to me. In my life, I, I thank God. I wanted more. And then you know what came to my mind? We have real milk in the garage because of Easter last week. We don't buy real milk. We have real milk in the garage. And don't, don't, just listen to what I'm saying. Don't think anything. Just don't let your mind go wild. I didn't eat last night. I just don't eat. I didn't eat. Don't worry about it. And so I was starving. If you saw me, Sharon, saw, I was eating cookies. They had a couple cookies while I was cleaning up. So, I, But then I, so I've got these Oreos, and all the way home I'm thinking, open them. And while I drive, if I don't pray, I feel like I need to chew or do something. Because I, I won't do a good thing. I'll start worrying. So I try to pray. And, and these Orioles are right next to me. You say, that is a crazy, you mean you, ha hey, look, you got your battles, I got mine. So I get home. Amy's not home yet. Set the Orioles on the counter. Open them up. I'm going to have one. Don't get ahead of me because you don't know the end of this story. You weren't there. So I open the Orioles and I have an Oriole. And the first thing comes to my mind. It's 11 o'clock. I got work to do. I know I'm going to be up late. There's real milk in the garage. And you know what else I thought? Daniel was over Thursday with the kids. And we told Daniel, we won't drink that milk. Will you take that milk? Yeah, yeah, we go through milk. We'll use it. Well, you know what? He forgot it. 
So I'm telling myself, God, you made Daniel forget that milk. So I'd have real milk with these big old Oreos. I'm thinking, boy, this just all fit together. God just knows how to do everything. Okay? I'm, I'm, I worked all day. I got more work, just busy, busy, busy. So I stop there and I go, you jerk. That milk getting in there. Don't do that. You'll regret it. You regret it. So the moral of the story is, sometimes it's a battle. Say, how many Oreos do you have? One. And it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> you have to learn to be satisfied with what God gives you. Because if you aren't, you'll never be satisfied. Rachel had Joseph wanted more. She's still unsatisfied. You know why? Because her hope wasn't in God. My hope, the song says, we don't quote them enough, but I like to because they're good, great. My hope is built on nothing less. Huh? Huh? Than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Thank God that he cares. The Lord is the key, not Jacob. Psalm 27 and verse 14. I look at this. I don't have it memorized anymore. I did. It's kind of struggling. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You say, is that the way it's written? That's why I quote it. I quote it loud. Wait on the Lord. Rachel's jealous of Leah. She begged Jacob for a son. She finally has a son, and that's not enough. She wants another one. Maybe you're waiting on God for something. Maybe you know someone who's waiting on God. Don't look to anyone other than the Lord to meet that need. I, there's a verse. It's great how the Bible, when you rightly divide the word of truth, it's neat. I, I thought, I love, I'm partial, but I love John the Baptist. Man, I love that he didn't dress good and he had a very healthy diet. Locust and wild honey. And he would go way out in the boondocks, Lakeville, if you will. And he'd preach, and people would come to Lakeville to hear him. And they came to him, and they said, Who art thou? John 1, verse 19, they asked John, Who art thou? John is one of the few people in the New Testament prophesied to come before Christ in the Old Testament. The forerunner, the messenger. So they said, man, here's this guy, he's baptizing, he's preaching. They said, who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but he confessed. Here's what John said. I am not the Christ. I am not the Christ. We need to say that more. I mean, we need to be, but we can't act like we're special. John knew. You see, to me, the, the point of that answer, when they said, who are you, John? John knew where the answer was. And John the Baptist knew <coughs> voice strain. Imagine that. John the Baptist knew who <coughs> knew who he wasn't. Hey, God's work goes on if you and I are here or not.
But I think while we're here, we ought to make sure that we're doing his work. Don't be jealous of each other. These preachers who are jealous, I just want to kick them. Oh, brother, whitey, oh, my people. Come on, man, just, you're serving God anyway. I mean, look what Jesus had. Jesus picked 12. One was the devil, right? Two they called sons of thunder. How'd you like to have lightning and thunder crashing all the time? One was a doubter. The other one we just call Peter, and he was a handful. If the Lord only would have picked him, he had his hands full. Who do we think we are, man? Who do we think we are? That God should treat us better than they treated his own son. I remind you, they crucified Christ. Didn't care. In fact, when he's on the cross, they admitted, truly, this was the son of God. I'm going to die. But if I die to myself and die to who I think I am, that I could serve him and live better. We got to go. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Thank you, Lord, when we don't remember you, thank you that you remember us. Thank you, Lord, that you give us what you want us to have. There's no reason for us to be jealous of anything or anyone else. May this get deep into our heart. May this get deep into our soul so that we live in a way that magnifies you, not magnifies what we lack, but magnifies Christ. When John saw Christ, same chapter, when John, John 1, when he saw Christ, I'm not the Christ, but when he saw Christ, he said, behold, look at him, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank you, Lord. Please bless our day. Please bless our service. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.